All right, ladies and gents, back at it again. And I gotta ask you, what's one thing that every old man needs in their old man truck? It's power, you know? Everybody needs to be able to plug in their, their favorite coffee maker, back massager, deep fryer. So what we're going to install today is a 1500 watt power inverter. It's uh, basically, it hooks up to your battery, uh, your truck batteries or car batteries or whatever. And it pulls 12 volt power from your batteries, turns it into 120 volt power um, by doing an amperage change and all types of fun stuff. Basically your, your, your 12 volt batteries crank out a ton of amps at a lower voltage. And so when you swap it up to 120 volts, you basically put out less amps, but you can get higher voltage, which allows you to run uh, different appliances that would normally plug into 120, like power tools and all types of fun stuff. I've already had this set up in a vehicle before, so that's why it's already kind of made up. But basically it's pretty simple. You got a power wire, you got a ground wire, they run to your batteries, and that's where your main power comes from and then all the control interfaces on the inverter itself. You got on and off switch. There's On this particular one, there's two USB ports and then two, um, two uh, regular 120 ports, uh, wall plugins. And you can see they run 12 and a half amps. So the one trade off here, since this is only a 1500 watt inverter, of course you can go bigger. But since this is only 1500 watts, you can only run 12 and a half amps. Whereas through a normal, a normal wall plug, you can generally run up to 20 amps. Through a regular 120, we may be getting a little, a little too technical here, but, but there's the math behind it. The only real safety feature it's got, it's got an internal breaker, but uh, just to be double safe, I added this external uh, inline breaker here. It's just a little switch. If it if it goes off, it'll pop out this breaker, and you just reset it by pushing the lever back in. Um, maybe it's overkill, but it's helped me out a couple times. And then you got this wire right here, and that's you just ground that to the car somewhere. Not entirely sure why you need that since you already have a big old ground, but who knows? Since this is already made up, and I don't really feel like undoing any of these connections, or because they're very difficult to do at least in my case, because I'm not an electrician. Um, I think I'm gonna start by placing this where I want it and then running the wires back up through the truck and into the cab. So let's get started. So I went ahead and pulled the little door strip thing up on the driver's side because I'm pretty sure I wanna have the inverter on the driver's side. And there's really not a ton of room in here to run the wires because they're, they're pretty big. It might fit, but I'm not sure. There's also the screw has to go down, the screws have to go down the middle of it. So it's not looking too hopeful at the moment, but we'll see. All right, I got the other side piece in the front removed so I can run the wires up through there. I got a hole cut up there and one of the rubber pass-through ports for all the other wires, so I'll be sticking them through there. I got it in place underneath the driver's seat facing the rear. That's kind of where I like to put mine. It's convenient out of the way, but it's not too far if you need it. I think I'm gonna run the wires through this hole, and then I'll cut a hole down here in this part. Uh, run them through here and then up and we'll we'll see where we can go from there Now as I was expecting it does it gets pretty tight up there And it's kind of hard to run these big wires through there Especially with my big hands. So I'm gonna go for the old zip tie to a welding rod trick and see if I can poke it up through that uh, pass With this method the old welding rod trick works pretty good. So I'm gonna route those up here, probably just tie them right here into this battery. And then uh, we'll go about trying to hide the rest of the wire. All right, so we got the little step plate back in, that front panel back in. You can see the two wires up in there. 
Um, I had to notch it a little bit just so the wires would fit a little better. I covered them in tape for now. Uh, I don't know. I don't really like that look. I don't know if that's how I'm going to keep it. I don't know. There's not really room for one of the like wire harness holder things. So I'm not sure what to do. We'll, I'll figure something out later. But for now, it's functional. Everything's hooked up. I got the little ground clamp on a bolt here uh, for the mini, the mini ground cable. So now all that's left is just got to hook the positive and negative up to this battery and should be good to test that. on fire nothing's hot so then if she's working then it should turn green yep it's working all right I guess we can plug something in I pulled her way back here so you guys can see no extension cords no nothing no fancy trickery just the old inverter got my Milwaukee angle grinder out here plug the old Milwaukee in turn on the inverter give it a shot seems to work pretty good so it's all installed now I, I know it's not the coolest thing in the world but I'm kind of excited about it it's a pretty cool thing to have in your car not too hard to install um, then if you can keep like an extension cord in your truck and plug in stuff if you want to if somebody's tire goes flat and you have a compressor a small compressor or something you can inflate tires you can do all types of cool stuff with it it's really useful and, and it, it's just it's just a good thing to have you definitely have to pick the watts though be careful if you want to install one of these you can go with a five six hundred watt one but you're really not going to be able to power much besides just charging laptops or maybe small things but with a 1500 watt it's kind of middle of the road you can do some power tools you can do a, a tv a bunch of some bigger stuff but you couldn't go as far as like like you couldn't use something like a welder or something that that takes a lot more a lot more watts but basically as long as you follow the amp rating and uh, you can look them up usually online stuff will have ratings of how much watt it'll put out you got peak watt and RMS if your inverter is rated at 1500 watt uh, peak power then you're only gonna be able to run about 750 watts consistently um, whereas 150 RMS, which I'm pretty sure that's what this is, that'll be able to do uh, 150 or 1500 continuously. A lot of things, a lot of electronic things, when you turn them on, they have a spike in power. Um, so if you've got like a power tool that draws 300, when you turn it on, it might spike up to 600, but only for a second. So that 600 would be the max watts it could it would take, and then the 300 would be the average. So as long as you do your research and you're careful about it, you can power a lot of cool stuff. And uh, yeah, it's pretty neat. Show off to all your friends, get all the ladies and stuff. Well, yeah, that's about it. So just remember if you're gonna do something like that to be safe and take all the precautions and that's, that's all I got. Oh, if you enjoy the video and information and stuff, then feel free to subscribe. If not, that's fine too. And uh, have a good day. I'll see you later.